started. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Hallie Gordon. I am the Artistic and Education Director for Steppenwolf for Young Adults at Steppenwolf Theater. Um, and we're very excited to have uh, many youth here from different uh, organizations. Um, and I want to just start by giving you a little bit of context. It was about four, and a half, four or five years ago um, that TCG was working on a, um, one of their conferences was around audience engagement. And I looked around and I noticed, and the future of audiences, and I noticed that there were no young people at the conference. And I thought, well, that's really weird that we're talking about how to connect audiences, how to get younger audiences, how to get more diverse audiences, and yet there's not a young person that I can see here. And so I talked to Rachel Fink from Berkeley Rep, and she and I thought it would be a great idea if we started bringing teens to the conference. Um, we, uh, both of our organizations, which you'll hear about, have programming for youth, as well as, as the other um, uh, youth you'll be hearing from. Um, but I think it's really important to note that there's, for youth now, um, they're much more um, racially diverse in their friendships um, than at least my generation was. And so if we can cultivate that relationship and those partnerships with teens, that becomes our audience. And there's a lot of um, research from, from the Wallace Foundation and other foundations in which organizations are trying to get millenniums in the door, they're now trying to get the Gen X in the door, and as soon as it takes you know, a couple of years to survey, evaluate, focus groups, and by that time these kids are the kids that we're all looking for to come to the theater. So my point is, we have to engage with them now in this conversation. This, these these uh, people sitting here right now are the audiences, the board members, the artists. Um, they are the voice. Um, and it's important that they are recognized and that they start coming to these conferences more often. And um, that you value what they have to say and that they also value what you have to say and they get a natural a national scope um, of what theater is like and what the challenges are and what the amazing things are so i think this is a really amazing opportunity for both all of you and both everyone here so you're going to hear a tiny bit about everybody's programming they're going to be timed um, <laughs> they're going to be timed everyone gets seven minutes uh, and not every single person, but uh, every theater company will get seven minutes. I will have them introduce themselves. They'll talk to you a little bit about the programming. And then we'll have a back and forth discussion of, of questions, concerns, challenges, all that kind of stuff. So why don't we start with, we're going to start with what? You guys. The Playhouse. Playhouse. Cleveland. All right then. So we start with Cleveland. There yes, you go. Hello everyone. My name is Alan O'Reilly. I'm Education Programs Manager at Cleveland Playhouse. And this is my team, the wonderful Tanika Conway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you a little bit about our programs here. Here at Cleveland Playhouse, the team program is called CPH College. It was started in 2006 to strategically engage youth across all aspects of our organization, including theater makers, theater administrators, audience members, boarders, board members, and funders. I'm going to tell you a little bit about each aspect that our teens are exposed to in the CPH program. Theater makers, all artists, designers, actors, and directors are invited, usually in this very room, to lead uh, interactive master classes or discussion-based workshops with our teens. It's a great opportunity for the teens to connect with our artists, actors, directors, designers, and conversely, our designers, actors, to directly converse with our teens and engage with them. We've often heard from artistic director Laura Kepley and other members of our design and artistic team that they love having the enthusiasm of the teens in the same classroom, being around that, and having them in the audience as participants with our performances. Theater administrators are an, uh, another aspect of the program. Staff members from across our organization either lead workshop sessions with the youth or host them to shadow them in their department. This can last a day or four weeks. 
Um, these give our teens exposure to possible careers in the theater beyond being actors or directors, but also to learn about the administrative aspects of Cleveland Playhouse. Um, they often marvel, our staff does, at the high level of projects that the youth complete, while the youth have opportunities to work alongside really high level staff members on a day-to-day -day basis as they strive to complete their projects. Another aspect is, of course, audience members. Basically, the CPH College Day, it meets once a month. Uh, we start off with the two workshops that I mentioned. And uh, for example, uh, this last one that we had was a very special one. We started off with two workshops, and then uh, it was built around our performance of Fairfield. Uh, after the two workshops, the teens attended a what we call behind the scenes audience engagement program featuring the world famous uh, playwright uh, Ken Ludwig, who's uh, writing our first play of next year's season, uh, Comedy of Tenors, along with Eric Koble, the author of Fairfield. So they had exposure to the workshops in the morning, then we fed them lunch, and then they participated, yes ma'am? Four minutes. Four minutes, okay, getting close. All right, uh, then they participated in that behind the scenes program uh, and engaged with Eric uh, Koble and uh, Ken Ludwig. Then they saw the performance of Fairfield. The dynamic in our outcall theater with 300 seats, when 100 uh, of those students or 50 of those students are teenagers, the dynamic changes and the actors appreciate that, the audience appreciates that. Here's a great story about a particular instance where a teen was watching a production of Venus and Fur in our outcall theater. She was sitting alongside elderly patrons when an especially eye-opening moment for this youth came about. I didn't realize that the 80-year-old woman would even understand all of that sexual innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized that she was probably a grandmother and knew a lot more about it all than I thought. <laughs> Our teens are also exposed to our board members and funders. Recently at the centennial uh, announcement of our 100th season, coming up right upon us now, uh, the teens played a big part in that. They're ambassadors for the program. They're articulate. They're uh, very knowledgeable about the CPH pro uh, college program and are talking directly to the funders and board members. And that, of course, pays dividends when those people support programs like CPH college. So that is basically the overview uh, of our program. Uh, it's a wonderful program. I'm very new here at Cleveland Playhouse, but uh, I've had some great exposure so far to this program and a lot of great teens. And I'm especially encouraged that it's not just focused necessarily on acting, uh, but also on the administrative aspects. Any quick questions while I'm No, wrap we're going to hear from your. Gotcha. From your now youth. it's your turn, Tanika. I only have two minutes. So my name is Tanika Conway. <laughs> um, I just graduated from Euclid and I'm. Um, Menor High School, which is like 10 minutes away. Um, I'm going to Cleveland State University, and I've been with Cleveland Playhouse since I was actually in eighth grade when I started, thanks to one of my friends. Um, like he said, there's administrative things. I actually worked in the office for my capstone for us, for my senior year to graduate, and uh, I worked in the education department. So if you have any questions about CPH, how, how it is now, how it was before, because I was here right when they moved from the other building to this one, you may ask me. <laughs> touched on everything, and like you said, I only have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And just, um, just to say, we're going to take questions at the very okay. end um, of this. Thank you guys so much. Thank for you. <laughs> Berkeley Rep, um, Berkeley Rep, where do we have Ben? Graham! <laughs> um, uh, I'm Ben, I'm from Berkeley Rep, and I've been with Berkeley Rep for five years working on their teen council program. I'm their community programs manager. Um, these are three young women who have participated in the teen council for many years, close to my heart because they're amazing, but also because they are the future of the theater, truly, and it is very, very bright. Um, Teen Council was started over 13 years ago when we got a, a school building donated to us next door to the rep. And we went to the teen community and said, why aren't you taking our classes? What's going on? Why aren't you here? We have kids, we have middle schoolers, but no teenagers. It's just a no teen zone. <laughs> um, and they said, it's because we don't see ourselves when we come there. Um, and because you haven't asked us to come. You've asked our parents to come to the theater um, and our grandparents to come to the theater. So we said, what do you want? They wanted to see the theater at um, Berkeley Rep. They wanted to see and understand the landscape of the Bay Area community and see different kinds of theater. They wanted to make their own theater. 
and they wanted to learn from professionals at the theater and be treated as equals in that learning moment. So Rachel Fink, the director of the school, said, I think you guys might need to help us because we'll be terrible at that, um, because we're good at programming for adults. So she created this team council, um, and now it serves over 400 Bay Area teens with a core leadership of 14 teens from different schools. These are three representatives, um, and they create programming for themselves and for their peers by asking their peers what they want to do and what they want to have access to at the rep. Um, so we're gonna focus just on one of our programs. We have a bunch of different ways to um, uh, do that mission, um, but this is the Teen 1X Festival. <coughs> Uh, and each one of these young women will talk about um, their experiences going through the festival. Um, so I'm Jet Harper. Uh, the first part of our Teen 1X Festival is a playwriting competition. So we have a couple workshops where young writers come and they work on their own plays and they submit them. And the play selection committee, which I've served on, uh, we basically sit in a room, we learn what makes a good play, uh, what stories we want to tell. We want to tell diverse narratives. We want to tell stories that appeal to other teens. Uh, and we sort of make our own season. So we pick plays that work well together, we pick plays that we want and that are well written, and the two plays that we pick uh, go on to be produced, they go through a workshop period, and then, um, then there is a um, interview and audition process, and the designers um, <clears throat> are interviewed by a, all of the fellows, which are, fellowship program at Berkeley Rep is basically college graduates um, get to work with, or. They become a fellow, and you have to work with um, a teenager, and then after the fellowship program, you move on to become a worker person at Berkeley Rep, uh, whatever that is. And so I was a lighting designer, so I worked with one of the lighting fellows, and I got to have a collaborative experience, one-on-one -on -one with a professional in that field who taught me what things are. It's not like, a, it's not like a, um, here's what you have to do, it's more of like, what do you want to do, what do you, what's your vision for this show? And so it's, um, um, yeah, and then the actors don't really have a fellowship person because there's a lot of other things at Berkeley Rep for actors, like the summer intensive and the actual classes there, and so, yeah. You guys stand up. Yeah. yeah, sorry, thank you. Yeah. Here, let's all three. Um, yeah. um, I'm Eleanor Maples. I've been a part of the Berkeley Rep Team Council for all four years of high school, and I've participated in their WinAx program for those four years. I've seen all different sides of it. My first year, I started as an actor, and that was really, that year, I felt like more respected in my art than I had ever felt before. Um, not just by the adults, but also by the teens involved. There was just this mutual respect, and so I kept coming back over and over again, and so I was um, a set designer the following year and had a mentor, a uh, fellow mentor. Um, and then my junior year, I came and I was a director of one of the plays, and then this year, uh, it became sort of my passion and my baby, and so I got to actually produce the festival. Um, and so there are opportunities all across the board to involve yourself in different aspects of producing a play. Um, and the, the impact for me has really been that this is a space where I feel respected as an artist and not just as a student to take care of, um, where I feel like I'm contributing to the community and that the community values me, um, which really drives my passion for it. Great, thank you three. Okay. Um, next, where do we have uh, Steppenwolf Theater? Great. So, sorry, come in. Um, I'm Megan Chuckman, I'm the Associate Education Director at Steppenwolf. And um, sort of similar to a Berkeley Rep, around nine years ago, we started our Young Adult Council at Steppenwolf. Um, and the aim was to create a professional development program for young people so that they could learn the inner workings of a professional theater from every angle. Um, and one of the things Hallie was really interested in in starting the council was to find a way to really authentically engage teens with Steppenwolf and Steppenwolf with teens. So we do that in lots of ways, but three of the primary ways 
uh, we benefit as a theater from having a young adult council is that we get the opportunity to have them advise us on marketing and to also host events where they bring their peers into the theater. So every year we have events for hundreds of teens across the Chicagoland area. Um, the teens on our Young Adult Council, we have 20 members a year, advise us on season selection for our Steppenwolf for Young Adult shows. And this year we've also started a mentorship program with our junior board, which has allowed the junior board to learn about our education program in really unique ways. Um, all of which has been, again, fruitful for the teens in our program, but really fruitful for us as a theater as well. So I'm going to show a short clip of a video that we have for our program um, and then have two of the young people involved with our program talk from their own experiences as well. The Young Adult Council is a way to develop life skills just in a really cool facet. It totally opened up my worldview of what I could do in theater. I met all these artists in the city who are just thriving. You learn about all different kinds of ways that you can be an artist, and I think that'll help me. We've met costume designers, set designers, directors, people who make the theater happen. I saw just a professional work environment. Learn how to talk professionally with people who might have an impact on your life one day. Networking abilities, like I feel like I'm better like in this situation. I feel like I can do that now. It's about the people that you meet and all of the really great things that you get to do. We're just all so different and have such like different opinions on things and it works together. These are people I would never have met if I hadn't been on the council. And here we all are, and we're all interested in the same thing, and we're all gunning for the same objective, and we're all great friends. I'll consider that a teaser. <laughs> <laughs> to obviously look on our website um, and see more information about our council as well. Um, but with our remaining time, I'd love to first invite Mariah Woods, who is a, a current member of our council, to speak about one impact, impact for her. Um, so being a part of the Young Adult Council has like helped me grow in so many ways as an artist and just as a person, but something that like just sticks out to me the most is, so we do this thing um, as a part of learning about theater that we call a script boot camp, where we take a really great play and we'll focus on a few things that we're going to learn and take from the play and be able to analyze about plays like character or language or plot or something like that. And I remember we got a script, um, it was Sarah Rule's Clean House, um, and I read it and I was like, okay, I don't really get it, <laughs> but um, it was, I liked it, I, but I didn't, I didn't understand what I was supposed to take from it, but I wasn't worried about that at all, because I know mm -hmm. once I went to council and we discuss it like we do, and we do like the activities that we do surrounding it, and uh, it would unpack it for me, and I'd just, yeah, I'd, I'd leave with a better understanding, and I was like, completely correct. We went there, I went there and like we, the, they were talking about like how the stage directions were like, it'd be interesting to see how they performed that on stage. Like if you know the play, there was this moment when, they, uh, when the stage direction said they fall in love and then they fall more in love and it didn't even register to me like how would somebody do that? But then one of the council members said that and I'm like, oh yeah, like that, that, that is important. And then everybody just had such different opinions on what the title meant and, um, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, another thing, you know, one of the characters speech, speaks Portuguese but understands Spanish and the other um, speaks Spanish but understands Portuguese and we actually had a council member who spoke Portuguese and another council member who spoke Spanish so then they read that for us and when I had originally read it I was like, I, I, I mean I just read over it because I don't speak those languages but being able to like hear them say it and it was so beautiful and it's like those are the kind of things that I wouldn't be able to uh, do if I wasn't a part of council so I'm grateful for that. Great. <laughs> here from our alumni network. We've started an alumni network. We have over 60 members. Is going to talk about being a couple years out the residence of the council for her. 
Yeah, as a college student, um, as a junior in college, I've been able to stay connected to the Young Adult Council and Steppenwolf for Young Adults by, we have meetings twice a year, alumni reunions, when run when either winter break or summer break, to stay in touch face-to-face -face with other members of council, the current and the former, and then also um, we have regular emails that go out as updates about what each former council member has been up to. Um, and also, it's been really helpful as a college student to recognize artists that I encountered when I was on council and then feel comfortable approaching them and saying, hi, I saw you know your play or I met you as a council member and I was wondering if I could follow up with your work and learn more about what you do is a skill I definitely feel as though I learned on council. Um, and other alumni have felt the same. Um, two of our alum are interns at Steppenwolf this summer um, and one of the students I was on council with she is in New York and she followed up with a stage manager who she had met at Steppenwolf and was able to follow up with him and learn about what he does in New York um, and then we were able to give back to Steppenwolf by providing a network of resources from college students across the country who are working at different companies different universities um, for current council members to learn about options for colleges they might want to go to or paths they would want to pursue after council. Great. Oh my God, you guys are doing great. I'm so nervous taking time, I don't want to cut anyone off. Okay, let's go to Alliance Theater. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sarah and I run the teen program for the Alliance Theater, so I'm just going to really quickly introduce these three young ladies who are on our teen ensemble. Um, we have a lot of programs that we do for teens at the Alliance Theater. We have classes and some pretty robust summer programming, as well as programs um, that cross all of the different divisions at the Woodruff Arts Center where the Alliance Theater is housed. Um, but they're going to talk to you a little bit specifically about the theater specific group, the Teen Ensemble, which we created. We're going into our third year of the Teen Ensemble. We wanted to create this program both to kind of give ourselves a really good entry point into that part of our community in Atlanta and open up a dialogue with them and to provide these kind of world class opportunities that could be a complement to what uh, high school students are learning in their school drama programs. So this is Kyla, Shelby, and Deli, and they're all going to talk about um, different ways that they get to engage and be integrated into the fabric of the theater at the Alliance. Well, a really great thing that we get to do as part of the teen ensemble is go see um, the shows. <laughs> we go to the first previews, and it's not even just seeing the shows, we get invested in the process of the shows. We get the script beforehand and we're able to read through it and analyze and discuss it with each other and talk about themes and plots and then we're able to go see the shows and <coughs> compare it to what we've read and what we've discovered while watching the show. And then after, we get to meet the cast and talk to them and ask them questions about it and how we felt about it and that's a really great opportunity. Um, so, we also, um, <laughs> some of the shows that are really great, we um, see stuff like A Christmas Carol and Steel Magnolias, which are classics, but then we also get the opportunity to see world premiere shows like Bull Durham and Tuck Everlasting, which is going to Broadway. <laughs> and um, through that, I was able to meet Casey Nicola and talk and discuss with him about the show and it was an amazing experience. Great. Um, also, after each show, we were encouraged to write a review, which is really great. Instead of just thinking, wow, that was a great show, or that was a really good performance, we're encouraged to think critically about what we saw, think about how the directing styles and how the actors approach the characters and how even the set design um, comes together to create this whole performance. In addition, throughout the year, about once a month, we also have the option to go to workshops, which can range from anything from improv to audition techniques. And it's really nice because sometimes the actors from the shows we're going to see later on the season come to give us a workshop before we're able to see them. And it's lovely. I remember uh, one workshop on film auditioning and acting on film was taught by a woman that we later saw act in a new play called Edward Foote, which is based in the Appalachian Mountains. And it was really lovely because then we get to see the diversity of Atlanta actors and all their talents. And sometimes we even have workshops from um, actors and teachers from around the country or around the world. Earlier this year, we were very lucky to have a Shakespeare master class from the head of the drama school at Lambda come and teach us. And that was lovely because I've had a little bit of Shakespeare training through my high school. But 
Shakespeare is, uh, learning Shakespeare is like an ongoing process, and he was really great explaining, for example, iambic pentameter to me, and about how the rhythm of Shakespeare's language uh, is incorporated into the performance. Great. Right. <laughs> uh, at Alliance, we also have an opportunity to perform, which is really unique from a lot of other team programs that we actually get to put on our own productions. And they're very different from our own high school productions. Um, I've been in um, the Teen Ensemble for the past two years, and we've done two different main productions um, that really deal with social justice issues and issues that we don't really get to talk about in our high school productions for fear of parents calling. Um, <laughs> like, um, our first show we did was about a um, young uh, gay girl. It's called FML, How Carson McCullough Saved Her Life, and it was about a young girl, gay girl dealing with her identity in Catholic school. And then this year we did a production called Antigone, uh, presented by the Girls of St. Catharines, which was a world premiere play. And it dealt with a girl who um, her director was, had an affair with her as a high schooler. And the issues around that um, with Antigone as a production. Um, we've also had a lot of collaboration with the arts community as a whole. We work with the High Museum of Art in Atlanta and we get to do um, different shows um, with the different exhibits, um, moving exhibits and current exhibits. We did a um, show with Howard Finster, a folk artist, and learned about his history and went into his production like with unbelievable garb, like getting people, arts patrons, to follow us by pretending to be silent angels. And we got to do really avant-garde, weird art that was fantastic. <laughs> um, and also in the shows, when we're not cast in the full productions, um, everybody else gets to be, still be a part of the production by shadowing costume artists and um, the directors and learning about different aspects of the theater. Great, thank you. <laughs> and next we have the uh, Center Theater Group. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, I'm Camille from Center Theater Group. And um, just to acknowledge two things quickly, not all of the teen reps are sitting up here. If you're a teen representative, can you raise your hand for a second? <laughs> among all of these programs, we're intentionally talking about points of difference, but we share, we have a lot in common. So Center Theater Group Student Ambassador Program, it's a leadership development program. It's an eight month program. We work with about 24 high school youth each year. Um, we pay for all their transportation costs, and at the end of the program, each one receives $500 as recognition of their contributions to the theater. If you're thinking, I don't know if I can do this at my theater because I don't have an art school nearby, Actually, the majority of the people that we bring into our program have little to no direct theater experience, and that's intentional. So some people see their first play after they've already been selected for the ambassador program. Um, we consider this a workforce development program in an arts management setting. Um, also, that term, workforce development, is very helpful when you're talking to your staff or your board. So students get to job shadow. They work alongside working professionals. Our program model is project-based learning. And it's also terrifying because we, staff and teaching artists, don't know what the projects are. We let them choose them. <laughs> so the students work on small group team, teams. They're introduced to a concept, arts education, advocacy, um, uh, st the, yes, uh, basic marketing techniques, participatory action research. And then we look at them and we say, OK, what strikes you about that? What do you want to work on for the next five months with us? They choose a very ambitious project, and then they do it with nothing but our support. But it's really about them. Um, they also receive extensive leadership training as a full group of 24. Uh, I just want to acknowledge it was developed by Kenesha Foster, who's in the room. Um, yeah. Yeah. So they get introduction to different leadership theories, leadership techniques. We have staff members who have received leadership training come in to speak to them about their experiences. Patricia Garza did that this year. Um, we also had them do things like take the Myers-Briggs test, which some of you may have taken, and then talk to one another and think with themselves about how does, how does my leadership style define the way that I walk into a space? How can I go into any workforce environment or into a theater or into a theater workforce environment and bring my best self to the room and actually speak in my voice. Uh, we also have them doing written reflections along the way so that they can reflect on what they're doing and so that we then read them and then kind of adjust our curriculum um, 
as we go. So some of the big projects that they worked on just this year, uh, the advocacy team decided that they were interested in the lack of middle school thinking, middle school funding locally. So they developed and then led uh, arts workshops in local middle schools. They chose the schools, they set everything up, they went and did it, they evaluated themselves. So that's the example. And um, CTG gets a ton out of this. We learn about um, teens' views. One of the other teams interviewed 800 other teenagers and then looked at why they do or do not attend theater. They then presented to our entire senior staff and they're taking that to help plan how they reach out to teens next season. I want to hand it to Elijah Green, who was one of our ambassadors this year. Okay. <laughs> Wow, she covered so much. Okay, so um, we have four teams, arts advocacy, arts education, student concierge, and student scene. So the student scene team is, well, let me back up a little bit. I'm wearing a wristband that says Be Heard, and I think that that, especially at a conference called Game Change, is really uh, speaks to the central focus of the ambassador program. Uh, we're always, throughout, empowered to be in our own voice and embrace our diverse viewpoints on the world. We're always, look, at, we're always, the, the point is we are so diverse, we're so different, and that's what makes us so beautiful and makes our programming so robust. So, um, the student scene team, for example, they organize pre-show events to engage youth before the show. We did Immediate Family this year, and what was the other show we did? Um, uh, Chavez, Chavez Ravine. Ravine, yes. Uh, so, the student scene team, basically on their own was designing the atmospheric, uh, let's say, elements of, the, uh, of how the theater would look, how it would smell, how it would feel for an audience coming in with pre-show materials they would be exposed to, and that helps to just get teens acquainted with theater. It's like $20 tickets, it's called the student scene, and it happens, I think, it's like two shows a season, and it's an awesome program. Um, Student concierge, you heard they interviewed 800 teens about what they do or don't like about theater and why, why they're not coming, why they are coming. And it's research like that that is helping to form the next generation of theater goers, and it's awesome, it's invigorating. Um, arts advocacy, I was on that team um, with Eric. Um, so yeah, we designed curriculum for a middle school arts festival. We did musical theater dance, uh, poetry, and improv. And it's great, actually, two days after we get back from this conference, I'm going to start with some friends from the program uh, teaching theater at one of the boys and girls clubs that we visited. So the work doesn't stop. It's the work is so powerful and the work is so um, impactful on the communities we're serving that, you know, our voices can't just stop at the end of the program. So it's awesome. Um, I'm missing something. Arts education. Um, arts education, they work with, because the Center Theater Group has three, three theaters, and uh, one of them is the Kirk Douglas, and the arts education team got to work with the directors and the playwrights of some shows at the Kirk Douglas Theater and talk about the major themes in the show and interview them and design, they designed this, um, I don't know exactly what it's called, but like this, this basically instructional guide to each of the shows so that audiences, specifically teens, could hook in further and deeper into the material so that they're not walking in like, whoa, what is this crazy set? So like, you know, they're, it's, it's all about bridging the gap between what knowledge, what expertise we have, what life experience we have, and what um, the theater, how much time do I have left? Um, 40 seconds. 40 yeah. seconds. And, and what the theater needs. So they're really, there's really an, an um, abnormal emphasis on what we have to bring the, the diversity, the just, how, what, what power we have intrinsically because of our identity and our social location, it's great being at this conference because it's like we're already having these conversations, so it's really cool to be in a room where other people are on the same page as us because it's like we're already ensuring that the theater will continue to be diverse and inclusive and equitable for people of all walks of life. So I'm going to, before we open up to questions, I'm just going to throw out something to the entire group, including the, the teens that are here and not necessarily sitting up here. But I'd love to just for you to talk about how being part of these organizations has been a game changer for those organizations. So how have you seen, you know, the organizations change internally by your presence, by being there, by doing the work that you're doing there. Yes. Um, Do you want to stand when you 
Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mentioned earlier I've been a part of the Teen Council program for four years since my freshman year, and now here I am, graduated senior. Um, and at the beginning, my first teen night, um, which is a similar program that we have, um, where we invite teens to come see the show, see an interview with an artist working on that show, um, and get a catered dinner all for the cost of ten dollars. Um, so uh, when I was a freshman, our team nights were in one of the classrooms at Berkeley Rep School of Theater that has a capacity of a hundred people, but uh, we usually would get like thirty or so to see the interview, get the dinner, and go see the show. Over the years, um, as Berkeley Rep has also acquired new space, we've had to go back and ask for more tickets because too many teens are signing up and we have wait lists <laughs> for um, the amount of kids who want to go to this event and who want to be a part of um, this group of teens seeing this theater. So we've consistently had to go back and ask for more tickets and um, ask for more space for teens at this event. Great, can we do one other theater company and then we'll go back? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, this year, uh, Steppenwolf for Young Adults did this show called This is Modern Art about the graffiti bombing of the uh, modern wing on the Art Institute. And it was on the main stage there. And it's, it, I thought it was just such a different kind of show to be there. And we host events around this, um, the shows um, in the Steppenwolf for Young Adults season. And when our, at our event, there was just like, and I'm so used to seeing just like a sea of gray in the audience, like when you go and see a show, or just of people who look exactly the same. It was such a diverse group of people, and it was like sold out so fast, they had to like put more chairs in the audience for people to see, and I think it just like, it, it just like diversified, like, and um, the, the amount of people that were coming, so yeah. Great, let's take someone who hasn't talked with yet. Um, hi, I'm Lauren Payne, and I'm present, I'm with CPH. Um, one thing I have to say about CPH is that um, one big game cha one big game changer is that as far as funding, it's a free program, so it's really easy for a lot of the kids to come out if they can't afford to be a part of a great program or if they can't afford to be a part of different things where you have to actually do have to pay. The thing about CPH is that it's free, so it gives these children opportunities if they can't provide the funds for these other programs to still be involved in theater and get to know it, it also brings, um, it all, I'm sorry, it also shines light on people who don't know much about theater. Since it's free, they feel that they can come in and join and see how it is without actually having to feel as if they, as say they didn't like it and they feel they didn't want to waste money and now they're upset. They can't be upset because it's free. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that's a great thing about CPH is that it's well fu it's funded so that the teens can come in and just enjoy it without having to worry about that as well as parents providing money. Great, thank you. I'd love to, oh, you had, you had a quick thing you wanted to add to uh, that? Yeah, all I wanted to add was uh, part of the theater scene program that Eleanor described, uh, the artists whose plays we see consistently say that the nights that the teen council comes are the best audiences. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, we're teenagers in the audience and we're engaging with the art we just had food, which helps, uh, <laughs> and we just had uh, an interview from someone who was really in on the process. We know what we're in for and we're excited about it, and it always shows, Great. and that's what we've heard from adults. Great, thank you. I'd love to open it up to questions um, that any or all or some of you might have to anyone here. Yes. Uh, is there any way we can access the 800 interviews and the yeah. data points that we have together? Yeah, yes, we can absolutely make that available. Uh, we've got some, I believe, one sheets now at the back of the room about yeah. our program that has my contact information on it. So email me, I'll send it to you. Thank you. So we do have one uh, sheets from, I think, if not all, many of the theaters that are up here that you can get a hold of. Great question. I'd like a copy of that. <laughs> I, I would be remiss in yeah. not saying this was Nigel Porter. His, he's Woo, Nigel. a teaching artist. On this. Uh, other questions? Yes, all the way in the back. When you guys um, started doing cross 
teen council theater work around the country? Is there interaction uh, at the teen level? That, that's a great question, yes. Um, okay, so we were just talking about this yesterday. So, and last night at three o'clock in the morning. So, um, we, I don't think we really have, but we should be. Um, um, now we were talking, we were like, oh, well there are all these teens at this conference this year and there's so much, there are greater ways we could be utilized. We could be, we could take a day, I don't know how effective this would really, I know I'm not a planner of a conference, but you know what I'm saying. Um, yes. We could take a day and write. So we could say, um, you know, let's instead of the, like the two-parters, for instance, yesterday, let's take that chunk and say, let's have all the teams get together and brainstorm solutions to, to impact, pro I just went to a wraparound strategy session, it was awesome. It was like, let's brainstorm issues that are impacting all of these theaters in common and say, or in these communities and saying, how can we, further um, enhance our outreach and enrich what we're doing for people. So we should be, but we're not yet, but we should be. We just follow each other on Twitter. So yeah. And then last night again. Yeah. So yeah. 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 We're all really connected. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. Um, so since some of the strategies that are being employed are so, this is great that it's work development and attached to professionals in the field, which I think is key. Is the leadership in your companies paying attention to the strategies that are being developed by these young people and employing it for main stage programs? Because we're all talking about how to diversify our main stage audiences. And we all, those of us in education, know it's happening. And we see it, and, 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 and these people are seeing it, and they know it. And so that really important bridge we're all trying to figure out, it seems like these guys have the keys to it. Is leadership looking at those strategies and employing them? I can address that quickly. It's a journey, and it's at the longer that you do these programs and the more that you can get people in the room and have them understand the capacity of teenagers, the more that they'll buy into it. I mean, the first couple of years it wasn't, but we're, we're committing to that, and next year, all of the projects are going to be more closely tied to the main stages. So I think it's also kind of, you know, people are scared of teenagers. They don't they don't understand if they don't spend a lot of time with them, they don't understand what they are absolutely capable of. You know, I I will also say that I got a TCG grant, an audience revolution grant that is specifically about bridging the gap between our subscription show adult audience and our young adult audience and creating an environment in which they go see the theater together, whether it's a main stage subscription show, whether it's Step More for Young Adult <laughs> show, whether it's a whatever that is on our campus. Um, and so hopefully, once we get through that, there'll be information on whether that worked or not. <laughs> and for the other theaters, uh, mm -hmm. how are you funded to help it be free for, to the young people? Key Bank. Key, Key Bank CPH Thank College. You. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Wells Fargo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> corporate is a really good direction to go with this kind of work because they can buy, they can click into the workforce development aspect. Can I just say I love that a youth knows how they're funded. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Qu question over here and then we'll go here. Yeah. When they first starting these programs, what is the appeal that was made to teens to want to participate and or for the teens involved, what what drew you in? Who went, um, yes. Well, for Center Theater Group, um, oh, sorry. Oh, oops. Um, for Center Theater Group, our, my high school is like right down the street and we were always encouraged to go there and to participate. We, I went to Ramon C. Cortinez, a really big, weird shaped art school <laughs> um, on Grand Avenue, downtown LA. and. I was like, oh, and I'm, I'm not from LA, I'm from Delaware, so I was like, oh, let me put myself into this little you know, new thing, so that's why I went <coughs> over there, and I'm glad I did. Great, anyone else want to talk to you? We haven't heard from um, oh. Sabina. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> um, for me, definitely, uh, I heard about CTG from my school, from my uh, theater teacher, and I was definitely interested because uh, theater, I, I always liked theater, but I could never find that proper connection because you know, if I looked up a program online, it was like, oh, you have to pay this subscription amount. And you know, that's money I didn't have. And so then when I looked into CTG's uh, student ambassador program, they were like, yeah, we're gonna give you a stipend and then we'll give you a bus pass so that you can come over here and you guys can be a part of the program. And that's what definitely helped me a lot just because I'm not at like the best financial situation ever. And so they're, help, they're giving me that push they're giving me that capacity to go and inform myself about theater and become part of that community. So it was, yeah. Great, and the last one I just I'm Chloe and I'm from Berkeley Rep. And
And so Berkeley Rep doesn't just have a teen council, they have workshops from for kids from like preschool up to adults. And I started doing, I started at Berkeley Rep with my first clowning class when I was five. And um, I moved away to Boston, but when I came back I went all into the theater company and they have a great summer intensive that really drew me in and then I took different workshops and the educators have been so supportive and the community especially in the Bay Area is so supportive and excited to be there and so in eighth grade I snuck into my first teen night <laughs> <laughs> uh, to see Sarah Rule's Dear Elizabeth and I had been working with Ben before and he told me to get involved in the teen council and I went to my first teen council meeting and I've gone to everyone. <laughs> Great. And you, you had a question? Yeah, I, I will say that a uh, quick question. It's sort of like a little inventory I'm just trying to get. Are, uh, just to clarify, are all of the programs free? Is there any one of the programs that we mentioned? They're all free across I the board. Free. I also, I'm just curious, uh, are they, uh, in terms of access in which students can part uh, participate, are they all open or are there, I mean, we have a program, but it basically focuses on a few particular schools that we're in partnership with. So I'm just trying to get a sense which are broad open all comers and which are it's from this particular school or group or what have you. Sure. Um, why don't we talk a little bit um, about how you yeah. apply to your program. Do you want to start, Mariah? Yeah. Uh, so ours is for um, a grades 9 through 12. So if you're like incoming freshman and there's an application and then if you, I guess if we like you, <laughs> there's an interview and then from there um, there's Select it. So great. Any anyone. 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 Yeah, yeah. Any school. Any school. Any school. It's open. It's everyone. open. Yeah. How about you guys? Are you, is your program? <coughs> yeah. Um, we. It's open to all schools. Anybody in the Atlanta metro area that can provide their own transportation there, and it is audition based. So you have to audition with a monologue or a song or two monologues, and then they select you if you want to be if you can be in the group. Great. Yes. I'm Michaela Steris. I'm from Center Theater Group. Um, and Center Theater Group actually opens it to the Los Angeles and Orange County areas, because anybody that can make their way to whatever different event. So Center Theater Group has the student body as a whole that anybody can be a part of. And then from there, we are selected for the specific programs, like the student ambassadors, or my program was the August Wilson Monologue Competition. Great. And the Student Ambassador program is actually just Los Angeles County. Student Ambassador program is just Los Angeles County. We intentionally, starting next year, we'll take no more than two students from each school because otherwise we find that they, they don't branch out. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Um, anyone in the Bay Area can participate in Teen Council programs like the 1X Festival and like uh, Teen Nights. For the leadership team, we are actually uh, creating our own application process to pick the next year's uh, teenagers, so we sort of create the means through which we perpetuate ourselves. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's a new program that we're doing, uh, but anyone can join as long as you can make it to our meetings. Um, yes. Uh, so it's incredible to see all of you up here. Um, once you, you know, you've gone through this incredible program, once you leave that, what can our organizations do to continue to support you in your growth? Meredith, do you want to talk about that in terms of being yeah. alum? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a, it's been great, especially to stay in contact with the specific leaders in Steppenwolf for Young Adults that, like Megan and Hallie, who I've been able to work with, and I feel like anytime I have questions about something I'm interested in, I can reach out to them, has been great. But then also they're able to connect me to other artists if I have a question about something. Um, one of my professors at Northwestern we'd worked with um, at Steppenwolf for Young Adults, so it was really nice to be able to follow up with him on his work and say, I was really interested in this project and um, and then be able to, there's an event Seven Wolf Young Adults did with, with him as an artist. So it was nice to be able to stay in touch with them as well and I felt really supported and encouraged by that work. And I will say from our end, again, we have two, um, two youth that are now graduated from college that are now going to be interns at Steppenwolf. We've had them audition for Steppenwolf plays. We've had one of them on the Steppenwolf stage. And I will say that for the first time, our alum are now um, 
donating money to the Steppenwolf for Young Adults um, mm -hmm. program. So now we've gotten a contribution, unasked, unsolicited, a contribution from them and a lot of their parents as well. Who else wants to talk a little bit about how, how they can help stay in touch with? Organizations? Yeah. yeah. Um, one, if you have money, you can give us scholarships <laughs> <laughs> so we can go to college and continue our learning. Um, and if it's just people themselves, like, like mentors you can keep mentoring us like it doesn't just stop yeah. here like you can continue to help us as we go on like you can give us tips you can give us resources you can tell us about your experiences like it doesn't just all right you finish program bye like and, and it's done like that's the way for you to help us continue our outreach because in the end you guys do know stuff that we don't even though we do know a lot like <laughs> <laughs> like there's things that like comes with experience that you can help us with Great. Other, other? Yes. Hi, my name is Eric, and I just wanted to say something real, real, real quick. Um, one way that you could really help us is recognize that not all of us go to an art school. I myself, mm -hmm. I'm going to say um, I go to continuation school, and that is something that lacks the arts. And I'm really grateful for CTG taking me in. And I don't know who asked the question if, um, you know, can anybody apply? I don't know who asked it. Was it was it you? Mm -hmm. Can any anybody apply? I'm right here. <laughs> anybody can apply. Yeah. But but one way you could you guys could really help is focus. On, yeah, you guys can focus on art schools, but also focus on other schools as well. How did yes. you hear about it? I heard about it through um, this one program called Artworks LA. And so they hooked me up with, you know, <laughs> they hooked me up with <laughs> the Santa Theater Group. And then that's all, that's this, this is what happened. Thank you. That's a really important thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, yes. Um, I'm Jessica Lee. I'm What are the relationships with the high school drama teachers? What Eric yeah. just said, not all of the schools that we're working with have drama teachers. Right, right. The ones with drama teachers find out about this on their own and bring that to their students. Like we didn't do the school that, that Jeliza mentioned, we did zero outreach to them because they find us. Yeah. I'm out in the schools that do not have drama programs talking to the English teachers, talking to the assistant principals, saying like, where are the students who have expressed interest in the arts, not theater, any art? Who is the kid who's writing in the back of the room? So yes, we do, of course, CTG works, we have great relationships with local drama teachers, um, and sometimes those can be really key relationships to reaching out to their students. But, you know, at a certain level, that's the low-hanging fruit, and those are the guys who are already aware of what we're doing. So that's, that is absolutely relationships that we build, but we're increasingly trying to go a little bit deeper. Yes. Um, I'll be honest, with my school, there was no outreach, and I actually found out through a friend. Like everyone here is like, oh, I had a program, or it was on the street. Um, if you walk through any school in my area, there's nothing about CPH at all. Um, a friend of mine who was actually homeschooled, and her mom is a teacher and really influential in the arts community. She was like, hey, I know you're in eighth grade, but they said that you can do this program, so come and do it. And that was how I found out. Um, at my school, we don't have drama. All we have are two plays that are, we have two musicals and two plays that are produced by um, one of our elementary school principals who has theater background and has money, and <laughs> that's it. There's no drama in any of the schools. Our middle schools don't even have plays. Like, so the outreach is kind of hard in my area. So like, like he said, like you kind of have, it needs to be reached out to more than just art schools. Because I didn't even know that there was an art school in my area until I was graduating. <laughs> so like, it's hard to get into the arts in like their mind because like I'm a network in my community but I can't obviously make every kid like come come on come to CPH they're like no 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 <laughs> even if they are interested in the arts so yeah like there needs to be more outreach to right. those other people thank you um I can only really speak for the high school I've graduated from but it's right down the street from the Berkeley rep uh so we have a lot of Berkeley high school students doing stuff at the Berkeley rep and uh, the head of the drama department sort of understands this, and he makes sure that the fall play or the spring musical doesn't necessarily completely line up with the One X Festival. Um, and he sends people that way if 
he, they seem like they might need it, and he encourages us to stay involved. Uh, so it's not necessarily the closest relationship, but he is aware that this is happening, and he's cool with it. Great. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, I went to OSA for a time. I transferred out um, Oakland later. School for the yeah. Arts. Yeah. Oakland School for the Arts. I'm sorry. Um, which is an art school, and I was in theater, and it was a very kind of, it was a conservatory, I guess, for theater in that, like, the teachers and the instru instructors are like, this is what you have to do, and it's a very, like, it's a very clear teacher and student like uh, relationship, and there wasn't no there was there wasn't any collaboration, and it wasn't like pleasant sometimes. And so I went to Berkeley Rep um, after recommendation from lovely Eleanor here um, for a more professional experience and a more in like a more collaborative and a better teaching experience. And that's what what that was what was provided for me, I guess, from that. Great. Yeah. Great right, question all the way in the back. They might have something that's a little bit different, I oh, think, okay. than this perspective okay. from the Atlanta Yeah, either, either one, one of you. And then we'll go. Yeah. Oh. 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 Um, in the, uh, for Atlanta, I've noticed for me, uh, my teachers kind of want to keep the teens at their schools mm -hmm. with their school drama program and not really want to go out. And so I really wanted to, uh, my school is doing really typical high school plays that really didn't talk about like social justice issues or things that I was interested in. So I had to kind of push away and drag other teens from my school <laughs> yeah. to Alliance from the drama teachers. So I know that my drama teacher knows that things are happening, but she isn't that compliant with um, us dedicating our time to another organization. Great. So and we're going to be working with a couple of schools to hopefully kind of partner with their curriculums now so that we can maybe make it a little bit easier to have that conversation and schedule things. It's something we're trying next year. Question back. So that goes back to my question. For those that are not in art schools, um, are you guys as theater educator from the administrator perspective, is there any um, backreach to the school to say, Hey, some of your kids are coming to us. You don't have a theater program. How can we help you build a theater program in that school? Uh, you know, in terms of like, you know, eventually getting a school sequence beyond the theater. Program. And is that for the youth, or is that for us well, running those programs? Sure. Programmatic, but if the youth answers. Yeah. Did you yeah. Did you have something you wanted to say? Um. Well, for my school, I go to a charter school, and so you know, there really is an art. It's basically math, science, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but what uh, Center Theater Group did was that they uh, got in touch with my school, I think for the second year of the row now. And so they bring uh, a, uh, a teaching artist to school and we learned about August Wilson every Monday for 13 weeks, 10 weeks. And then I, th I thought that was really cool. I mean, it's our second year having a theater class, so it's barely, you know, an introduction. But I mean, it really helped a lot because I, I sort of, I had, while we were learning about August Wilson, I was in the student ambassador, but I know that a lot of my peers, a lot of other underclassmen needed that class, and I, it's, it, it was very influential and uh, such a great experience to have Center Theater Group send an actual, uh, like, artist to our school to help us, to help the class, to help our class, because there are practically no, like, arts at our school, so. That was great. And I would say from, from Stefan, we don't do that for a couple reasons. One, we get a lot of phone calls from high schools that have no arts saying, can you, it's a, it becomes a different program and a different cost. Um, but also, I'm, you know, our department is really working with the Chicago Public Schools to get a drama teacher in every single school in Chicago. Those are the teachers that should be doing that instead of freelancing out to regional. That's what I mean. I'm yeah. the New York City Department of Education. Uh -huh. So I'm with that. Yes, so that's I'm what we're trying to do. Yeah. Leverage, like you, and that, and I don't know, Megan, if you want to talk a little bit about ingenuity in terms of how you're working with that organization to do that. Well, and I would also just say, which I'm sure is true of our colleagues, that these programs that we're representing are only one way that we work in schools. So for example, we work with 2,500 other students through our in-school residency program. We work with teachers directly. Um, so I just think that's worth saying as well. And again, I'm sure that's true of my colleagues. Um, but yeah, we work with a, a local nonprofit arts organization in Chicago called Ingenuity Incorporated, which is 
uh, its purpose is to advocate for all art forms for all students in the city of Chicago. So that's one way that we serve the mission of, again, not saying we know better than some of the teachers at schools how to serve their students, but how to work alongside them, both when we're bringing students to the theater to see our shows, when we're sending teaching artists into classrooms to work with them, and when we're recruiting for and having students as a part of our after school program. Great, and you wanted to add to that? I just wanted to quickly add, Cleveland Playhouse, in addition to our wonderful uh, Keep Eggs to Peach College program, does a drama club program um, funded by the Nord Family Foundation, which is a local foundation that funds a lot of um, education and, and, and arts-based programming. Um, and we uh, partner with six schools, three of them high schools, three of them middle schools, and uh, really bring about, really create drama club programs at those schools that meet after school once a week. We send in master teachers to advise the drama club advisor at that school. Um, three of the schools start had no drama club programs and we built it from the ground up. Three of them had them already, but were there to supplement and support and advise. Um, it's a great program. If you have any questions, feel free to approach me afterwards or Pamela or Alan. And just me. quickly, it is required that the school host a drama teacher within their school. So if they don't have one, they have to find the funds yeah. to have one to get access to all of the services we In have. this city? In here? In, in, in Cleveland? In, in two counties. Gotcha. That's great. Um, other questions? Thoughts? Yes. I'd just like to add that um, we were talking about how um, us students and teens found out about our programs, and I know that um, I did come from an arts high school. Well, originally I came from a public high school, and then um, by taking part in Berkeley Rep's programs, it made me more passionate for theater and made me choose to then seek out an arts school. Um, but there are also a lot of teens in our area who um, join our program who are homeschooled. Um, I don't know if you would know more about how they find out about it. I don't know how they find out about it. It's usually mom. <laughs> and she usually calls me. Or dad. Oh, okay. uh, but okay. but it, is, it is in the community and I think when you know someone else and they talk about their experience, it does end up being a, like a filler for some people. Um, because some people do have great drama programs and we don't want to take away, and I think that's the relationship that you have to have is each individual theater artist in the schools, do, what do you need from us? Do you just need us to provide you access to come see our work? Then here's how we can do that. Do you want to send all of your kids to our workshops because you have no theater workshops? Let's do that. But it's on an individual basis with the teacher and what the, the school needs. Great. You guys, I want to be mindful of, did you have one thing you want to yeah. add? Okay. Um, we also have like groups of students from schools that aren't, don't necessarily come to see our shows or don't necessarily have arts programming, um, for, usually for free. We get lots of tickets for free for them to come to our teenagers and see our shows and that's how a lot of them get involved. And this year, um, we just had our leadership team applications and it was announced who was on our leadership team and now we have a more diverse range of schools because of the schools coming to see our shows. So we have um, out in Hayward and um, just from the teen nights, not necessarily even doing most of the events. Um, and also from charter schools in Oakland and so on. Great. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Feel free if you have questions for anybody. Yeah.